right, first things first. Don't need you. Thank you. Goodbye. All right. Now, notice the XP. Bam, bam. Huge XP, like I said. And I was a level 11. Remember, I just got to 11, right? So let's see how much XP we got. First, let's shut off the necklace. Quick save. I don't want to deal with that mess again. And here we go. Start the leveling process from 11. I'll end up. Here's 12. Another Magus Arcana. More intelligence, so more spells a day, more skill points. Remember, everything for me is going into intelligence. Gotta max out all the ones that we know we wanted to max out. Here's my chance to get you caught up, and now I can start working on use magic device, baby. Uh, here we go. I'm gonna grab. What did I grab? My meta magic set. Uh, was this level 12? Oh, I didn't put anything down. I left it open to me. Oh, good. Oh, ghost, brilliant. I have three left, right? Uh, let's prove that to myself. One, two, three. Ghost blade is an obvious one. Uh, can't get bane yet. It's up there. But spell blending is another one. And this is the one that allows you to either pick a wizard spell, any wizard spell, which includes your mega spell list, but also the full list that I don't have access to. For, so, for instance... If you see me picking one right now, notice that I'm only able to cast, let's see, level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4 spells right now, okay? If I pick spell blending here and pick one spell, I can't cast level 4 spells with it. I can, or sorry, I can only cast level 4 spells with it. So I can pick a level 4 spell like Innervation, one that I don't normally have access to. Boom, amazing spell, right? Obsidian Flow, one I don't normally have access to. Amazing spell. Uh, of the other ones in here that might be interesting, like um, Emergency Force Sphere, this is something that's new. This is uh, because of the mods that I have. Uh, Bone Shatter, something I normally can't cast. I can't get Animate Dead normally as a Sword Saint, so here's my chance to grab it. See what I'm saying? So I have amazing list now, but it has to be a level 4 spell because it's the highest level I cast. Okay, if you don't want that, pick this one here, Spell Blending 2 Spells. It can be any two spells now that's one level lower than your highest. So level four is my highest, so I can't pick that, but anything from below it. So a level three spell, or two, or one, and I get two choices. And it can be three and three, three and two, one and one, one and three, however you want to mix and match it. But you get two this way. Now look at the level three stuff that I have access to that, again, I normally don't have access to. Remember, I have almost all these spells. Uh, for level 3. So these are all unique to me because these are wizard spells, not sword saint spells. I can get that battering blast, ray spellcaster. I'm not good at that, but I could do that. I could do deep slumber, no heroism. That's pretty awesome. Old persons, uh, protection spells are amazing for me here. I can summon stuff, get the spike pit. These are conjuration spells. Don't like that. Here's level 2 stuff that we have access to. Again, different kinds of summons, sense of vitals. You know my love for that bad boy, and I get greater invisibility here any minute. I can be invisible and sneak attacking all over the damn place. Sense vitals is an obvious choice. Resist energy for myself. Uh, I could get um, knock. That's a unique spell again to my mod, that or the mod that I'm using. Hypnotic pattern, some decent control spells. And remember, all the enchantment spells are hidden behind wizard spells, so I don't have ex access to any of those. So those. Whole persons, hideous laughters, all that shit, I don't have. Now I can get a couple. It's not amazing, but it's something. I mean, that's pretty awesome. So if you wanted to flesh out a build that, oh, I don't get heroism. Well, now you can. So this spell blending is amazing. Again, this is an addition from my mod. Um, other stuff. Burning Arc wasn't on my list. I could get that. Bone Shaker, auto hit move. Hell, I can do blindness. You get the idea. Uh, level 1 stuff. Again, all unique stuff here. Touch of Gracelessness, this is the one that's a transmutation spell that literally is very similar to the Ray of Enfeeblement. Instead of it being a ray, though, it's a touch attack. And instead of it nuking their strength, it nukes their, um, uh, it nukes their, um, here, let's just pick it. It nukes their dexterity. Same exact mechanic, though, otherwise. It's just one's a touch, one's a ray spell. One's strength, one's dex. So again, I can do that. Uh, that's an obvious one. Ray of Sickening, if I want Necro Lord for the Sword Saint for whatever reason, I could totally get some Necromancy spells now. I could get Mage Armor for myself. Remember, I don't have armor. 
if I don't want to rely on a teammate or I don't get the bracers of armor class plus four or greater, I might want to have that in my kitty. There you go. Uh, I can get um, yeah, hurricane bow. Who cares? An auto hit move, another evocation spell that I'm missing. Your piercing scream. I might want that. So again, up to you. I'm not grabbing that now. I have it on my list that I will grab it, which means I'm probably going to grab it down here. Why am I going to grab it down here? Because I probably want to get two spells, just like this. But remember, the two spells uh, limits me to any spell level lower than the one I can currently cast. Well, right now I can cast level four. At here, I'll be able to cast level five, right? Which means if I grab the two spells, level four spells open up. Well, remember, what was in level four? Here they are. Maybe I want Sense Vitals and I want to have a summoning like uh, Animate Dead of my own. Maybe I want to have that Innervation, which is an awesome spell, as you know. If you don't like that, or Emergency Force Fears for some extra protection. Again, this is a very trippy spell. Uh, notice I could go here and get the, the spell blending two spells, right? And here I'll be able to cast level six spells. So obviously I won't be able to pick a level 6 spell, but I can cast level 5, 4, 3, 2, or 1. And there's a lot within that category that the wizards have access to that I might really enjoy having. Notice something else. Well, first let's make our pick. I'm not going to waste your time on this. Ghost Blade is obviously what we're grabbing here. Uh, again, amazing spell. There's other stuff in here that's awesome. Remember, I had Wand Wielder. I could get Wand Mastery. That's the one that literally makes the DC check... Uh, higher because it's keying off my intelligence modifier now. That's still pretty cool. Uh, I can get reach magic, meh. Maximize magic. Notice that there's two. Again, this mod gives us this. The original pen and paper version is you can do maximize magic like this, but you can only do it once a day. So this is the pen and paper variant. This was the vanilla version that you guys have access to. They give it to you three times a day, which obviously you want that one. But if you wanted to be more pen and paper accurate, you would grab this one. There's also one up here for Empowered. Again, three times a day, the one that you want. The one of the day, which is the pen and paper version. Notice that we have Extend Magic three times a day. We have uh, Reach Magic three times a day. Preach and Attack is on here, where we basically just activate that. And it ignores their dex bonus for that first, or for one cold combat round. Well, remember, I have... Shatter defenses. I make them flat-footed myself. All I had to do was hit them once. Well, maybe you're having a hard time hitting them. Preach and attack that shit, baby. First hit that goes on, and then from that point on, it's uh, uh, they've intimidated and flat-footed, and now shatter defenses, shatter defenses, shatter defenses. Just a continual ass whoop. A solid choice. I like Ghost Blade though because it gives me two abilities that are awesome. One, Ghost Touch, which I'll show you in a moment. Two, Brilliant Energy, which I cannot use yet. Not until here, but we're about to get to here in a hop, skip, and a jump, because I guarantee you I got more than one level for killing that boss. So Ghost Blade is an awesome choice for me. Dimension Strike is another valid choice, but it only uh, it burns up two points per round. And it basically does the same thing that Brilliant Energy is going to do for me here when I can activate it for multiple minutes at a time. Why would I want to have something that burns it up and poof, it's gone? It just seems weird. Uh, but up to you. Devoted Blade. These are the ones where you can make it a holy weapon... An unholy weapon, the axiomatic versus anarchic, but it keys off of your um, alignment. Okay, I'm lawful good, I believe, on this character. Maybe lawful neutral, but let's say I'm lawful good. That means I can make one that uh, does damage to evil and that does damage to chaotic. Okay, whatever those two categories are in here, which I'm sure holy is one and axiomatic is probably the other. If you were chaotic evil, let's say you're playing a chaotic evil sword saint and you pick this it would give you the unholy option and anarchic option. So again, you could, could damage lawful characters and you could damage good characters, right? Which may be your thing. Now, if you manage to pick true neutral, which is kind of trippy, you would get all four of these by picking this one thing, which I'm not going to do, but you could do that. And again, it's a, an option. It's a weird option. I've never really toyed around with it, whether it's good or bad per se to have it over something like Ghost Blade versus Bane Blade. Bane Blade to me is the best of them. Uh, but we could have grabbed Arcane Accuracy. Remember, we have an insight bonus to our swing for one full round. That's kind of like your Precian attack, which ignores their dexterity modifiers, and you make them flat-footed, basically. It's kind of like Dimensional Strike, where I basically ignore their armor. This basically resolves all your attacks for one combat round as a touch attack. It's an amazing ability. This just gives you a flat swing bonus. 
But if you have a high, high intelligence stat, in my case, then hell yeah, that's a solid choice that works against guys that have decks and guys that have armor. I just have a plus to my swing. Poof. For one combat round. Solid choice. I do like Ghostblade. I'm going with Ghostblade. Now, spells, again. I'm not missing anything, not missing anything. I don't have effortless armor. But notice again, it's personal, and I don't wear armor, so there's no need to grab it. It's a waste pick. Then from here, this is it. I might as well just grab something from here. Ah, uh, let's grab Ice Storm, because again, I am an Evoker, and Shield of Down, because I'm an Evoker. Sure, why not? Boom. Now we're Magus 13, and again, here's where we get four points. Now remember, I said Brilliant Energy is amazing. We get Ghost Blade and Brilliant Energy. Brilliant Energy is amazing, but you can't use it until you have four points to burn. Here's where you get your fourth point, and here's your fifth point. That's the highest you can buff your weapon. Plus five bonus. So now I can use Brilliant Energy. So this is actually perfect. Now I also have Lethal Focus if they're flat-footed, which remember, Shatter Defenses, I can set them up for being flat-footed with my Corn Against Smash, hit them with my Power Attack on, and then after that first hit, now they're definitely flat shaken and frightened and whatever, and now if that's the case, then they're flat-footed to me. I get to add my Intelligence Modifier to my weapon, uh, my chosen weapon for damage output. So remember, I'm pumping intelligence through the roof. This is going to hit really, really hard. By the time this build is done, my intelligence, just so we're clear, is going to be 24, unmodified. I can modify it another 8 points with the right hat, which I'm about to put on from this damn wizard we just kicked his ass. So that 24 jumps to 32. With Bakken's Potion, that gives us another plus 2, 32 can be 34. And then there's a ring out there that we can get in Pit Tax that can buff your intelligence, another plus 2. So I can be at 30... What did I say? Uh, 34, so not 36 for intelligence. There's ways to push it higher, but not as a purist build. So, a solid, solid choice for me. And I could literally have, like I said, a 36 intelligence by the end of this build at level 20. Having said that, take the 10 away from 36. Now it's 26. 26 divided by 2 is 13. I could have a plus 13 intelligence bonus is what I'm telling you. That's extra damage per swing for anyone that's flat-footed to me. Just add it to my weapon. Plus 13. Then, wait, there's more. Remember, this is a little doohickey. Candy defenses. You have dodge armor equal to your uh, sword seat level. 13. Plus, or, or no higher than that. Uh, but you have to have an intelligence modifier equal to or exceeding that. And again, I can get up to a 13. So I can actually have a 13 extra armor thanks to my intelligence and this little do that. Remember also, I get to add my intelligence modifier to my initi uh, initiation rolls, which includes again with my dexterity, which sucks right now, but it's going to get better. And then again, so I'll have another 13 I get to add to my initiative checks. That's not as impressive as this fact that way the hell down here, what is it, 19? I can actually auto, auto guarantee where I'm going to roll a natural 20 every time. So my initiative is through the friggin' roof by the end of this build. And not, not saying that I'll always hit it where I'm the first one to go, but it should be as high as humanly possible is my goal. So I'll have a 20 natural roll. That's the 1d20. They don't even roll. It just gives you a 20. Then you add my intelligence modifier and my dexterity modifier to it. So a 13 and whatever my dex turns out to be, which is going to be pretty darn high. Let's just say it's a, a 6 just to have a number. So a 13 and a 6, so that's a 19 plus 20. I have a 39 minimum, let's just say for my initiation check, or my initiative roll. That's that's pretty freaking huge. And again, the reason that that's important is because we don't want to be flat-footed. If I get to go first, I ain't flat-footed, baby. That's awesome. That's why this build really comes together with that high, high intelligence. And again, intelligence also is added for my uh, superior reflexes for my um, attacks of opportunity. 13 is a lot of attacks of opportunity in one combat round. Now, are you going to use all 13? No. But... I'd rather have 13 than have one. Just saying. So again, it's really going to be a nice build. Uh, so we did that. 13 here. Skill ranks. Points, points, points. Do, 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 do. Uh, now, uh, to be clear, remember I have two more points that I'm going to invest in here. The one will be at 16, the one will be at 20. Right? We're not going to get to 20 uh, on this level of process today. But I will eventually. More of those means more points, right? So I can keep these up, keep these up. These will always go up. 13, 13 will always go up. So I'll have these all to 20 by the end of the build. And then I can get this to 20, no problem. I'm sure I'm, I'm actually catching up to it. 
but that, that means that when I get these extra points in, I'll have re been refunded all kinds of points. Well, where could I put those? Well, why don't you put them in there now? So I could put them into mobility, I could put them into stealth, kind of on you. Hell, I can make a lore nature or a lore religion person. Just pick one and run with it. Well, we already have points in mobility, is my logic here. So I'm thinking maybe instead of being like a stealth guy, I could be a mobility guy. We already have someone on the team that's really good at mobility. It's not the point. I'm still going to be good at it. If this gets to a 20 or real close to a 20, that's still a pretty high stat. But I could do a stealth. they kind of on you. But I know that use magic device will get to 20 before the end of this build. Uh, from here, feats at 13. Uh, nothing that I have written down so I can pick what I want. Remember, we are skidding that penetrating strikes, but that don't show up till 15. So at this point, greater spell focus evocation sounds like a good one to me. I could get... Let's see if it's here. Show one available. Uh, there is two other feats that are kind of interesting. Show one available. There we go. Um, see if I can find them. Improve to weapon fighting. Notice you need a dexterity of 17. This is not a dex based build. I have done a build. Feel free to look at my channel for the, the dual wielding Kukri Sword Saint build. Very fun. Ginsu Chef like no one's business, and you will do damage. Solid, solid choice. Highly recommend it if damage is your main goal. My main goal is to be tough, high dodge, massive protection so I can just uh, weather the storm. That's why I went the way I did it. But again, a deck space build will give you more dodge. Again, it's potato, potato. What do you want? I like the strength based character so I can carry stuff around. Up to you. But this gives you another attack with your offhand weapon. And again, if you're using Kukri's, Kukri A is your chosen weapon, which means you have weapon focus in it. You can get not only weapon focus for free, you can get greater weapon focus as a sword saint. You can get weapon specialization and greater weapon specialization as a sword saint. That's massive extra plus two, plus four damage per attack with a kukri. Uh, you have two kukris in your hand, so you have a plus two to their swing because you have weapon focus and greater weapon focus in them. Yes, you have a minus two penalty to your swings because you're two weapon wielding, but so what? Those just neuter themselves out. You get magic kukri, so now you're back to being on the positive side again. You get the really good ones because there's a lot in this game. And you can actually, by the end of your build, if you have a high enough dexterity at the start and at the finish, you can get three extra attacks around on your offhand weapon. So you could be swinging with a plus three or three, three swings on your, your main weapon hand and three swings with your off hand, uh, weapon hand. You're basically like two people in one for attacking. And throwing something like a Sense Vitals and Greater Invis where you're getting sneak attack damage off of every one of those hits. You do some serious freaking damage on that build. Feel free to check it out look it up. I'm not going that route because, again, I don't have the decks. And, yes, you can cheese this by finding a dexterity belt. I'm not going to do that. Again, I think that's wrong to get feats where I'm wearing magic gear and only when that gear's on I can actually use that feat. That seems weird to me. But you can do what you want. It's in the game. Feel free to cheese that shit. I'm not going to stop you from doing it. But improved weapon fighting is one of the other feats. The other one is the, the best version, which is greater to weapon fighting. See that? You need a dex of 19 for that shit, though, and that's your third tack. And yes, don't don't ignore the minus 10 penalty. That's your normal. Remember, your first swing is always at full strength, then your second swing is at a minus 5, and then your third swing is at a minus 10. That's normal, so that's all that's showing you. So again, it's basically normal progression. It's still at the minus 2 to your swings for all your swings, but again, you get your great weapon focus, you get your uh, um, greater weapon specialization, you have uh, arcane strike like I've picked up here as well. Remember, that's a plus 5 damage for all your weapon attacks. Then you throw in um, weapon specialization and greater weapons uh, weapon specialization on that shit. That's another plus four to your damage. So now you're up to a plus nine. Then you have a high, high intelligence. And again, you catch them flat-footed. So now that adds to that as well. You could put out some serious numbers like this. And then do something like a complete jackass, like throw haste on yourself. So instead of having a three and a three for your attacks on your left hand and your right hand, you have a four and a three. And a better chance to swing because haste buffs your swing potential by a plus one for all your attacks. It's just it just adds to itself, and then if you really want to get nuts, you have haste on yourself, and you're your best kukris in each hand. You got your invis uh, greater invisibility on, so it doesn't wear off when you're attacking, and you have your haste, and you have your uh, sense vital, so you do sneak attack damage, right? Okay, wait, one last spell to cast. 
in that order, you did all those three spells, Greater Invis, Sense Vitals, and uh, Haste, right? Boom, 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 three spells. Last spell you're going to cast, number four, Transformation. The one that takes away your ability to cast spells for several rounds or minutes, I forget which, I think it's rounds, and it gives you a base attack bonus equal to a fighter of your level. So if it's a level 20 character at that point, I'll have a bab of 15, as any sword saint, any magus will. You cast that spell, now it's up to plus 20. That gives you another attack around as well. So now instead of it being 3 and 3 with haste, it's 4 and 3. With haste and transformation on it, it becomes 5 and 3. And you're catching sneak attacks, and you're doing all kinds of damage with your kick-ass kukris, and your weapon specialization and great weapon specialization, and your lethal focus because they're flat-footed because you're invisible, and sneak attack, man, you see what I'm saying? You just start chopping shit in half. It's awesome. Throwing a priest and attack in there, or a, a ghost blade, or a brilliant energy blade, and you just really start shredding stuff to bits. Solid, solid build. Highly recommend it to anybody. Uh, rant done. Let's move on. Uh, what was I grabbing here? Uh, greater spell focus evocation. I wanted it. I said I wanted it. Uh, if I don't want this one yet... I'll go blind fight. I know I want it. Get it sooner than later. It'll be more helpful. And again, you can also do, uh, and again, another rant. There's not only blind fights. Uh, uh, there is not only blind fights, but eventually you can unlock two versions better than that. Just like the improved two-weapon fighting, there's improved blind fights. Notice the differences. Go over them here in a second. And then after that one, you get blind fight and greater blind fight, or sorry, blind fight and improved blind fight, and then you can get greater blind fight as the third. Notice it needs a high perception check or bonus, which means you have to be level 15, no, no less than 15 to be able to pull that one off. Uh, but notice what this one does. Uh, well, first let's let's do what each of them do. Here's here's uh, blind fight. Uh, in melee, every time you miss because of concealment. That can be 20% chance or a 50% chance. You can re-roll your miss. Chance percentile roll one time, again, to see if you actually hit. So, again, it's, it's a advantage, if that makes sense to you, for those of you that do the pen and paper version of games. You basically have two rolls. Roll it two times. Boom, boom. Did either of them pass? Yes, then you're fine. If you roll twice and both fail, well, then you failed. You missed. Sucks. Notice this also. An invisible attacker gets no advantage related to hitting you in melee. That means they catch me flat-footed normally. I don't want to be flat-footed. This solves my problem for that. Uh, that is, you do not lose your dexterity bonus. That's flat-footed. And your attacker doesn't get the usual plus two bonus for being invisible. The invisible attacker's bonus uh, do still apply for ranged attacks, however. So ranged guys can still screw me over. And my favorite part, I gain immunity to gaze attacks. Boom. Blind fight's awesome. Now, go a step further. Where's improved blind fight? You, your melee attacks ignore the missed chance for less than total concealment. What does that mean? Remember, there's two types of concealment. There's partial and total. Partial is like blur. 20% chance to miss you. Hell, it, it rains from the sky in this game, and that gives them minus 20% concealment. So again, that's ignored now, but for melee only. Okay, You may still re-roll your missed chance percentile roll for total concealment. So again, I get two rolls if they have invisibility on, greater invis, or vanish. Or if they have uh, displacement is another one that's 50%. That's total concealment. So again, 50% chance to miss. Whether you swing and hit or not, there's a 50-50 shot you'll just miss. You roll two times. Did you pass either? Yes. Then you hit them. Did you roll both? Do both fail? Yes. Then you missed. It's helpful at least. So again, that's still there. Then, uh, accessibly pinpoint an invisible or hidden attacker within 30 feet. That attacker gets no advantages. Again, that's ranged guys we're talking about. Within 30 feet. So close the gap is my point here. And in a dungeon, 30 feet's not that far away, but in a dungeon, 30 feet's pretty goddamn close. In a room, usually you're within 30 feet of most guys. If not, just, just move that little bit closer. Remember, your cantrips have that 30-foot range, So if you, unless you're using something to buff them. So if that's the case, just make sure you're within range of those archers of your acid splash. As long as you're within range, you're within 30 feet, which means you can see those little sons of bitches. Boom, problem solved. Um, then, let's look at the best one, the greater blind fight, which is a big investment, and I can see people not gra grabbing it. Obviously, this is for more fighter types, in my opinion, but still, solid choice. 
Your melee attacks ignore mischance for less than total concealment, which we had that in the last one. And you treat components opponents with total concealment as if they had normal concealment. That's the 20% chance. And again, you still get to re-roll that. So that 50% chance, instead of rolling two dice and having to be the 50, you roll two die and you have to be the 20. Awesome. That's baller. You just really just notch it up to a level of, nope, not going to miss you. Nope, not going to miss you. Mm -mm, no, I don't miss you. And those fights, that's what those guys are relying on, that you will miss because they have that full 50% concealment. So if you can get it into your build, I'm not going to do it. But if you want to, uh, still a solid, solid choice. Amazing build. Anyway, back to what we're doing. Uh, I have my blind fight. I'm happy with that. Moving on. Spells still, oh, now we're at level 5 now, and I already have some. Awesome. Let's look at level 4, make sure there's not something in here I wanted. I didn't want any of those anyway, so screw those spells. Now we're talking. Evocation spell, evocation spell. I'm good at evocation spells. Hell, if I wanted cloud kill, I could get rid of one of these, maybe grab cloud kill to just to start making them puke their guts out and dying. Awesome, we're immune to poison. This is a good way to cheese. Here you go. Earliest chance for you to start doing this shit for this type of build. Magi, um, magi, magi build. There you go. Um, but I don't particularly care. I'll do Cone of Cold and I'll do Fire Snake. I'm fine with those. And you'll notice, uh, normally, by the way, I usually tout Elemental Body 2 as being my favorite. There's a part in the game, if you're ever going to solo, where you need to not be alive. This is a way to not be alive. Two things. One, I don't know if this mod is it or if it's another mod, but one of these mods uh, has changed it where normally you can't cast in these forms. Pen and paper version says that's not true. So one of these mods, I don't know if it's this one or another one in the, uh, that you can download, you can cast in these forms. I think it might be this one. That'd be pretty awesome. The downside for me is I'm a sword saint. Remember, I don't have my weapon when I turn into this. I lose all my bonuses to candy defenses and all that shit that I get for high intelligence because I don't have my weapon in my hand now. So I don't want this spell. Again, another reason why I'm not going to solo as a sword saint. But uh, you could kind of pull it off if you went a sword saint where you did uh, improved unarmed strikes, where you're like a monk, where you punch with your fist. I don't like that. And it doesn't work on all the forms. I think it works on like the earth elemental. I think that's it. Uh, on the, the fire, the uh, air, and the water guy, they have attacks, but their attacks are not called punches. They're called engulf or drown or whatever the hell they call them so they're not physical punches which means again you're still not wielding your weapons it looks like you're punching him in the face and you are but it's not using the traditional fist the earth guy uses a fist i think so that's the only way you get to keep your bonuses if you turn into the earth dude which is uh, still kind of cool but meh. just saying moving on Still going. Level 14, baby. Remember, we started at 11. We're jumping all the way to 14. I have greater spell combat now. Uh, better concentration check uh, penalties uh, are less likely to uh, smack me in the face, and I still get to cast my spell. I'm going to go those. And again, what do you want to put that in? Are you really pushing to use magic device to get it to catch up, or are you interested in stealthy ninja man, or do you want mobility like through the roof? Kind of on you. I think stealth. Again, we have a mobility person. Uh, from here, I'll take Cloud Kill now. And I'll take Vampiric Shadow Shield. Why not? Why not give yourself a buff where if they hit me, that, that, that heals me back at the same time while damaging them? That's just funny. Level 15. We're not done yet. <laughs> Another Magus Arcana. And this is the one you really were hoping for. This is the one that if you can ever get this Magus, Ar Magus Arcana, you definitely want this one, in my opinion. Which one is it? Brother Mutant. Well, I'm glad you asked, class. Bane Blade. Boom. This one basically allows you just to shred shit. If you thought the, the dual wielding Kugri was awesome, Bane Blade, that, the main weapon. You can't do this to both weapons in your hand, just their main weapon. Bane Blade, that freaking Kugri, and watch you have a plus two to your swing. Because everything, everything you're swinging at is considered a Bane target. That's what this does. It's, so remember you've seen those... Uh, weapons that we picked up that's undead bane that means against undead it's a plus two to the swing plus two to the damage and 
when it hits, it does another 2d6 of damage, force damage, which they don't resist. That's what Bane weapons do. This is a Bane weapon for every enemy type. So everything you're swinging at with that main weapon in your hand is a plus two to the swing, plus two to the damage, and another 2d6 of damage on top of it. That's force damage. That doesn't get resisted. That's sweet. That's a really nice boon for you. And I can turn that into not only a one-minute buff, I can make it a 15-minute buff if I do the Enduring Blades, which you know I picked. That's this guy right here. Awesome, awesome. Never leave home without it once you can have it. From there, another feat. And remember, we're at 15 now. What was the one we were looking for? Through the peas. Penetrating strike. I ignore 5 DR now. Doesn't matter what it is, whether they have adamantine weapon or armor, if they have if it's a construct that has just innate DR of, of through the roof, it's five lower now. Poof, screw you. And that just makes it so much easier for me, me personally, to kill it. That's awesome. I'm gonna grab Baleful Polymorph, because why not? Uh, I'll take Elemental Body too. I don't care. I don't want the B shape either. Because again, once I turn into these forms, I don't have my weapon in my hand. And I don't think there's a way for you to pick Sword Saint and do good where you have like a claw attack or something. I don't think that's in this game. Nice. Boom. I finish with that much XP. 680,000 XP total right now. And I'm um, about this far into the next one not very so let's not even say that's half that's not even a quarter maybe an eighth of the way to the next guy decent knowledge arcana like huge knowledge arcana right now doing great for athletics stealth is looking actually pretty good i have invisibility on but obviously you would use invis greater invis or vanish anyway and boom plus 20 so that's a solid number as far as i'm concerned trickery is looking pretty i got my gloves on Perception is as good as I can make it. It's not amazing. Again, I'm not a wise character, so that's a penalty for me, but whatever. Doing really well. Hell, even my knowledge of the world is looking pretty damn sweet right now. That's a solid, solid tune. Let's look at spells now, shall we? I have six. Five. Oh, let's grab a... What do we want to have? Uh, I already have a web spell. I'm missing my gabos. You know, I want my gabos. So the only summons that I can actually pull off, and it's only because of this mod that I can get it. Uh, I like slow spells. Those are fun. Um, I like... This does not work with your weapon upgrade, by the way. You can do it to your weapon, but then you're trying to buff your weapon like Bane and whatever, and it'll take this buff off, so it's complete waste. I'll take this placement. No, yeah, no, 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 I knew it. Screw it. I'll take Stinking Cloud. Why? Because I have that dagger in my off hand, I'm immune to nauseating effects. I can cast this and stand in the cloud and watch them puke their guts out and stab them all day long. That's awesome. Uh, here, I got my two dispen uh, dimension door spells. Let's get that uh, cool dragon's breath twice. It's an awesome spell. Level 5. I want, I want overland flight. Last longer. It's not as good as this one. Oh, where did they go? As these ones. I'll take one of those back and I'll cast a slow here and I'll take another stinking cloud there. How about that? Uh, but I'll take this one because it lasts for 15 hours for me now. Um, I'll take a controlled fireball that's been in, uh, intensified. That does 15d6 of damage now. It's pretty sweet. These do it too. But this one's circular versus the beam. So again, on you. I could do the cone of cold. That's the massive beam, or, or massive cone, excuse me, of 15d6 of cold damage. If you don't like that, I got acidic spray. Now, the downside is for acidic spray, while well, it does 15d6 and then half, if they fail their check, it's a line. It can hurt your team. And I don't have a bonus to the, the DC check because it's not an evocation spell. So I'll take Cone of Cold here. And we're not yet into level 6 territory. In due time. We are a hop, skip, and a jump away from it, though. All right, first, where's my dead body? Let's look at the loot. Oh, the loot. Give me all your loot, you bastard. Now watch this. Okay, look at my armor. I'm at 27, 24. Okay. Well, let's do some fun stuff. We do newest to oldest. Notice he has the hat of mental perfection plus eight. Let's look at that bad boy. Oh, it's sexy, isn't it? Look at that wizard hat. 
plus eight to my intelligence, plus eight to my wisma, wisdom, plus eight to my charisma. That's freaking sweet. My wills went up. Uh, my charisma checks went up. My perception stuff went up. All the stuff that's based off of wisdom and charisma, all those skills are higher by four points because I'm wearing this kick-ass hat. My intelligence stats all went up by four points because I'm wearing, well, not four because I was actually wearing a tiara already, but only a plus two. They went up by six, so a plus three. Okay, three more points. Now I have a plus ten. Look at my armor. Candy defense plus ten. Touch armor. Candy defense plus ten. And remember, I can get this up to a thirty-six, so this can be three points higher, which means this can be three points higher. This can be three points higher, and we're not done yet. Uh, he also had a, a amulet of natural armor. Now remember, this is a heart of iron. It's really nice necklace. Makes you immune to fatigue, which is awesome, and, and uh, fatigue and exhaustion. Excuse me, and makes that aura, as you saw, that does damage. But I'm missing out on the next spot for a natural armor bump. If you want some extra armor for here and here, watch this. 19 for flat-footed, 35 for armor class. How you like me now? Wait, we're not done yet. He had a cloak of resistance plus 5. 14, 10, and 13. I already have a cloak on me, but it sucks. Here's one of the best versions you have in the game. 18, 14, 17. Looking pretty good, right? And it looks pimp. It's an ugly-ass color, but whatever. I wish it was actually the purple and gold, but whatever. Wait, we're not done yet. I have bracers of armor plus three. You see that over here. Under armor plus three. The mage armor spell gives you the best case scenario plus four. Right? The, or not best case scenario. It's only the case scenario. But plus four. So I could technically go up a point here and here. Big deal. Here's one that goes up five more points. So instead of uh, 35, 19, it should go up to 40 and 24. Ready? Boom. Boom, and I'm not done yet. I just need a better belt to get my dexterity up more. And Bakken's potion that bumps everything plus two, and these numbers are just going to start going up and up and up. I got my kick-ass dagger, plus three to my dodge. That's over here. You're seeing that in the dodge arcane protector. Dodge arcane protector. You don't get it for when you're flat-footed, but remember, we're trying to avoid being flat-footed at all costs. That's pretty awesome. Now, that's we're done with that. Notice there's some notes and stuff here, too. Missing pages of his book. If you read the lore on this, I'm not going to. It's actually pretty interesting. Uh, the whole point is, is literally, Varnus, the guy we just beat, the lich, he was cursed. And his curse was that his mind split in half. Half good, half bad. So he literally Fall trapped, you his dead. good self trapped him in this cage. It was literally himself that trapped him. How funny is that? We say that mess. More loot. Okay, ready for this? You're not ready for this. You ain't ready for this. First, let's go reverse order. Okay, here is the sword that I told you you would want if you were a dueling sword saint bastard. Or if you're anyone that uses a dueling sword. It has a natural 18 to 20 crit range that can be increased. It does good damage. It's a plus 5 weapon, the best kind of weapon you can have. It is also a speed weapon, so it already it hits one more time around. So you, I can make it a speed weapon, of course, but I don't have to. It's already there. And it's the Agile version. What does that mean? Again, if it's the finesse-wielding weapon, which it is, and you have a high dexterity, which I don't, but if you did, and which, of course, a, a dueling sword saint would actually go dex more likely than not, and you had some weapon finesse, you don't have to get slashing grace, fencing grace, which is a feat. Agile weapons already give you that effect. So basically, their dexterity modifier, if it's higher than their strength, would be counting for not only their attack bonus, but also their damage because it's an agile weapon. This is an agile weapon, and it's a speed weapon, and it's a plus five weapon, and it has the best possible crit range without it being keen, which we can do. That's awesome. Huge, huge props to just being a monster of a weapon. I can't use it, but it's a solid choice. We also have a bone shard, short spear, which we can give to, say, uh, an Inquisitor, whether it's ours or their, uh, the other one, Jethel. She can use it too. Notice it does negative damage on a hit. Okay, not physical damage. It does negative damage. That's awesome. Again, obviously, you don't use that. I don't think it's undead. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but it might heal them. But it's a plus four short spear. Awesome weapon, right? Notice this one. Get a nice crossbow. The Myth Slayer crossbow. Look at that damage. Plus five weapon. 2d10 damage on a hit. Decent crit range. Huge range. 
More than that, every legend has an end. More than one have ended with a bolt shot from this crossbow. This plus five heavy crossbow does 2d10 damage on a hit. If its target has one of the following qualities, it's huge or gargantuan in size, it is a dragon subtype, it is a giant subtype, or it has 20 or more HD, it inflicts a minus two penalty to the wielder's attack rolls, big deal, but it adds another 1d10 damage for each of the qualities the target has. So if it is a gargantuan dragon, that's two qualities. That's another 2d20 damage per bolt. So that jumps it up from 2d10 to 4d10. Wait, maybe it's a gargantuan dragon with 20 or more HD. That's three. So that should be 3d10 added to the 2d10. That's 5d10 damage per bolt. Poop, 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 poop to that dragon. It's a plus five weapon. Baller. Wait, there's more. Here's the Tyrant Flail. Plus five flail, one-handed weapon. Good one for Harem, for instance. It's actually the kind of weapon that he has in his picture, if you actually look at it. It's a mace with a with a, a ball with a chain attached to it. That's what a flail is. Uh, normal crit range, nothing fancy there. Plus five weapon, nothing. I mean, it's great, but who cares? This is the part you like. It applies, for every time it lands a hit, it applies a stacking minus one penalty to the target's armor class, all their saves, and their combat maneuvers defense. So just boom, hit him, he's easier to hit. Boom, hit him, it's easier to hit. Boom, hit him, it's easier to hit. It just stacks through the entire combat. Amazing weapon. Wait, there's more. This is the axe for, say, a Miri. Again, I tempt, was tempted to do a great axe sword saint build for this weapon alone because I knew I could get this here. And there's a ton of axes in the game. The downside is it's a two-handed weapon. But so what? I rarely cast through my, my spells through my weapon anyway. When I do, if I only hit once, eh, I could care less. This thing hits like a brick shit house. It's a plus five weapon. Has a nice crit range, as you see. And again, that can be increased. It says critical range 19 to 20. That's not a keen weapon. It's a natural 19 to 20, which means you can make it a keen weapon. Like I can do, and that would have been a 17, 18, 19, 20, much like my shorts or my longsword. And it has, unlike my longsword, a times three on a crit. Not times two, like all the other weapons, so it doesn't double the damage, it triples the damage on a crit. That's what great axes are awesome for. Boom, massive damage. Weight, it's plus five, high crit range, and deals an additional 10 damage on every hit. That's not counted in this number here. You're seeing the six to, wait, no, it actually is. Uh, this number here, the 6 to 17, sorry. The 6 to 17 is not including the extra 10 on a hit. Not a crit, a hit. So this could be 16 to 27, really. Amazing weapon, and again, a Miri will slaughter shit to no end with that in her hand. And again, we have one of my favorites, the Shepherd's Armor. Notice this little goober. This is studded leather armor. I can't wear it. Someone else on my team can. But uh, I can't wear it. It's a plus five leather studded leather armor so a, a three and a five make it eight for armor and they can have five more dexterity besides added to that so this could be a 13 armor added to the base 10 with nothing more than this and a high dexterity they could be at a 23 armor class wearing this that's better than plate mail then uh where the gets a plus two bonus on attack and damage rolls with short bows and long bows guess who i'm giving this one to yeah i'm giving this to ekin he's gonna freaking love it Huge armor, he'll have that dexterity modifier close to it, and he'll swing with his bow even more and more damage besides. Solid, solid choice for him. Again, awesome stuff that you pick up here, guys. I know this video's gone on a long, long time, because I'm bragging, because it's fun. Uh, if you fight this guy the old-fashioned way, when you get all the, the, the key and you light up all the little pillars here and this the portal goes away and you fight him with your team know he's going to kick your ass without like death ward like crazy and he does summons his summons come from the side and the side and i think in the middle here so you'll have like two or three guys on you besides him like immediately so be real careful i'm sure they're undead or something similar to undead and they're nasty but be aware that that's a thing now the only thing left to do here is to teleport the hell out Come on. This is the tricky part. You have to see it with the light. Yeah. But there we go. With that, though, we're going to bounce out of here, head back to town. This has been about 3... 45 minutes. Uh, so we'll push it for another 15 minutes and stop the video. I'll do it in increments of an hour as best I can, guys. So we still got 15 minutes to putz around. 
we'll go back to town, equip some people, see the stats that they have with their newest gear. The stuff that we're never going to use, we're going to sell. And I can use that for BP or buying better gear. I was kind of hoping to get the belt here. So the belt must be in pit tax. That's okay. I'm still swinging like a champ. I got three attacks and another attack over here. So I got four attacks in a combat round. Five if I do haste. Or do a speed weapon upgrade. But uh, solid, solid choices I think we just did for ourselves here by coming here early. And again, I am so far ahead of everybody else right now that if I were to shut off the XP share, or the uh, turn back on the XP share and the, the everybody gets XP from the saves and whatnot, from the skill checks and whatnot, I would be actually okay with that. Uh, since I'm going back, I might as well take some stuff with me, right? I'm not taking all of it. I'm not Adventures even taking that much wait. because I'm already overweight. But I will take it to the point where I am... By the way, let's put this to here. Uh, where I am losing all the stuff that's heavy until I'm down to about the medium. There we go. Not much, but that's another 50, 150 bucks right there. Okay, and if I take a knee, like I have to rest to get my, you know, if I'm fatigued, which I shouldn't because I have my necklace on, but if I did, I have my camping supply, that's like 10 more pounds I could lose. Quick save that mess. Put on that there. To revel. Come on, no one jump me. Just let me go home. I want to go home. I want to go home. Let me go home. Uh, 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 uh. About the end of the month, so we'll probably kick around town for a little bit or the surrounding area. Uh, throne room, because I want to equip people first. Do 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 do. All right, all right, all right. I'm over here. Inventory. Who needs a Myth Slayer? Jiva lost. Perhaps? Oh, how about her? She doesn't have anything fun. If she runs out of cantrips or cantrips don't work, why not give her something that she can use to shoot targets with for some sneak attack damage? Huge damage, plus 5 to her swing. I got a plus 18 now. Hell, that's better than my plus 12. So she's doing solid. Cool with that. Uh, oh, where's my Amiri? Hey, hon. Why don't you give it rid of me the Undead Bane, Flaming Earthbreaker, and the Frost Greatsword, this thing is just damage, period. Uh, let's get rid of the second execution. And we're going to slap in the Vanquisher. 26 to 37 damage, and she's swinging at a plus 13 right now. That's not bad. That is not bad at all. And this is not her weapon of choice, I don't think. She doesn't have... Oh, she does have weapon full grade. Oh, I was planning ahead. Look at me. Yay, me. Uh, matter of fact, since she's going to do that, let's just get rid of some of this other stuff. It's cell material. She has this one you can't get rid of. This one she'll use. When you get to that one fight, trust me, I'll show you where that's at. Make sure to switch her back to this because this will fuck up this weapon. And you don't want to do that. You want to mess, mess up this weapon. Um, Shepherd's Armor, where are you at? Yeah, can you bastard? The 5 Dex Dirty. Alright, check it out. Heart of Valor, 8. Mithril, awesome. Look at this, 13, 13, 18. 15, 15. 10 and more damage besides I think that was an upgrade we'll save this and give this eventually to him when he finally gets to the point where he can wear medium armor so we'll just keep it in the kitty probably put it in her chest actually uh, no one's going to use the heavy flail but maybe hear him he's a heavy mace guy though because I've decided he's a heavy mace guy because of this mallet of wool and some other maces that are coming that are going to be awesome but I could equip this to him here and again Solid 13 to his swing. 12 over on this one. Does good damage. And again, if you just want to bludgeon something to death, that's your guy. It's not bad. Uh, I could sell this, but I could just as easily sell that, and that's worth a lot more. So I think we'll just shift them back to the maces. And no one's going to use that, so I'll sell that for money. Um, Bloodhound. Again, this would be something he could use if he was proficient in it, but no joy uh she could be another person that you can make proficient in it again she's not doing it um 
Valerie should have been someone that's proficient in it, in my opinion. She was trained by the Aldori Sword Lords, and she, they didn't train her in dueling sword. It seems weird to me. But basically a dex-based character. He's not a dex-based character, in my opinion. Uh, she's not either. And she is. But she has no training in that and has no interest in it. So again, she's going to be fine. She's going to have her rapiers. She's going to have her... Um, what do you call it? Daggers and short swords and such. He... Keen rapier plus one. And I think I still want him to have the rapier. I was tempted to give it to her. I'd rather her have the Agile one, because then she gets her plus six damage from uh, her dexterity. Um, we don't need that short sword. I'm just going to take it off her. From there, oh, Bone Shard. Uh, I can put it on her. Remember, she has the ability to use uh, short spears as an Inquisitor. But while it's cool, don't get me wrong, she only gets two attacks with it. The negative damage is pretty pimp, and it does look awesome, but I'm not that guy. I'm going to keep her with the monk weapons, because again, she can flurry of blows those things. Obviously, we'll get her better stuff. But she, on the other hand, she already has a short spear equipped. Might as well give her a better short spear. So again, when she really just needs to pull out a shield and, and tank and, and still do damage, she's doing solid, solid damage. And that plus four to her swing, she definitely needed the help. So... That's cool. I do have the armor. Embracer's armor plus three. I can give to someone else. She could use them. She's only at a plus one. She could use them. She's only at a plus two. Let's get her up and give her the plus twos for now. The plus one can go to either Tristan or Octavia. Octavia has one. Tristan. He has one, so we can sell those. Uh, no one wants this axe. No one wants this earthbreaker. Short spear. At this point, literally everything else is cell material, except for, of course, the Heart of Fyra, which I should probably just put back on myself. And since we have the natural armor plus five, why not give it to our other tank? We'll take this plus two and put it on her. She already has one. Uh, Jubilots don't need it. Ekin could use it. Sure, why not? And then we have a plus one necklace we can sell. No one needs a vast intelligence time to sell material. Well, first, was there anything of their kingdom? Probably not. We're still waiting for Val on the 29th, right? Four days. Yep. Or Reg. Same on the 29th. Either of them, I don't particularly care. Quick save. <laughs> Adventures can wait. Oh, he's finally tired. I took off the heart of Ira, remember? Remember, all that tired comes back in. It doesn't make you exhausted right away. I will I'm say there. that, so they're not complete dicks. But, uh, yeah, they do go out of the way to say, Oh, suddenly I'm tired. Uh, that's a little weird. You just took off a necklace and suddenly you're exhausted. But, yeah, it actually does that. Oh, I should also point out something I forgot. With my cool hat, I have more spell slots. Remember, I have a higher intelligence. So, you know... Have fun. Do some stuff. Uh, let's do... I'll do corrosive touches because sometimes acid. Uh, and over here we'll do another dragon's breath. Greater and Viz. How about we do... Is it spray? Sounds good to me. We're still waiting for level 6 to unlock. Main square. This is where the game, to me... Anyway, this is what I always shoot to get to. I've done this part all the way up to this part that you've just seen probably five times now. This is my fifth time. Uh, I always try to get here because once you get to here, to me, most things become extremely trivial. Uh, you can have a really good build and slug your way through. And again, I'm not on the hardest difficulty. I'm not trying to be an egotistical jackal here. But it's one of those where uh, once you get the, the best weapons like that, the best gear, you know, the hat alone made my day. And I'll have spells more than I ever think of using. And I'll have a higher intimidation check. So here's the Bloodhound. Here's the Flail. Axe. Earthbreaker. Keeping the wand. Great sword. Keeping the armor. Keeping the necklace of double crosses. Uh, Cloak of Shadows I can give back to that one girl. 
intelligence thing, keeping the cold iron dagger. Uh, I can probably give that winter veil cloak to someone else. Uh, natural armor, we can pass that off. Short sword, no one wants it. Short spear, no one wants it. Bracers, no one wants them. No one wants this masterwork heavy crossbow. Sell this garbage. And that one too. Deal. 100,000 and then some. Looks pretty. And look how much they actually buy for. Into the hundreds. I mean, obviously, four times what you sold it for. But solid, solid stuff. I have so much money now, I don't mind blowing 25 grand on a bag of holding. Something for the team, as well as when I go solo, I don't have to worry nowhere near as much now about how much I'm, I'm taking back. That's a big increase. Quick save that mess. Uh, we're going to go back inside and drop off. Yeah! Well, yeah, to you too, jerk. Uh, I'm going to get inside and drop off the, the breastplate. Oh, uh, we have, like I said, about three days to kick around, right? So it's the 29th. We need to be back for Valerie or whatever, or at least be in the zone to put them on a quest. Uh, so let's take these. I'm going to have my my dead zone. Uh, well, I guess it's not going to let us put it wherever the hell we want. Alright, so fine. Take them. Uh, and I want to put uh, stuff away. That can get put away. Keeping the necklace of double crosses. Like so... Uh, who had the cloak? Shadow cloak, there you go. No, he don't need it. He's only got a... Oh, he's got the wyvern cloak. There you go, Tristan. You're protected from cold. Good on you, buddy. Uh, who else needs a cloak? Probably the sisters, right? Yeah. He's got one, she's got one. He doesn't need one because he's got a shield. She's got one, she has one. She's good, so yeah, let's just give one of the sisters a plus one cloak. Not that I care, but they have it now. I don't have to think about it. Cool. Oh, I should check. We got scrolls, I think, in that fight. Nothing that I can use, or I already have it. Jubilos, anything you got? Nothing that's highlighted as green. Good madam. Again, looks good. Last person is Octavia. Nope. It looks good. So everybody's happy. Uh, as far as levels go, no one else leveled. Which is fine. Quick save that. And what I want to do now is I want to go into the options. And we're going to set stuff back to the way it was. So is it difficulty? Only active campaigns receive XP. No. Only skill users receive skill check experience. No. Save that. Now base, it's back to the way it was. So a team of six is coming with us from this point on. Yes, I could take my three, whatever. Everyone else is still getting the same amount of XP back in base. But then at that point, then why would you gimp yourself? Take the full party. So again, if you shut those things back or turn those things off like I just did, XP share is back on like it should be. Save that mess. Uh, XP shares on that account like it should be. Um, anyone that does a skill check, it'll get split evenly amongst the team. So no one's going to out-level someone else at this point. Um, and literally, just to show you my team, a level 9 character, level 10 character, 10, 7, we're all over the place, 8, 6, 5s, 6, Seven, six, seven, six, six. Lots of low number guys. And I have a lot of dudes that are in the tens and me at a rock and fifteen. I'll hit twenty before the end of this game, no problem. And I'll feel good about that. So with that, my name is Brother Meat. Please like, subscribe, comment down below, tell me what you guys think. Uh, I'm going to put together the team. Obviously we're taking our teammates. I like Juby. Ekin's awesome. Tristan is a rockin' healer. Boom. With that, I'll see you guys soon. Bye now.